Oops. I thought 200 is a lot, but I already forgot to set the keyframe again. Hello guys and welcome to a new video. In this video I'd like to show you guys a tutorial about my Pixel in Drive uploaded a couple of weeks ago. And well, let's get right into it. In this first part of the video I'm going to show you guys how it's made in Cinema 4D and in part 2 I will explain you how to well, go further with After Effects, doing some color corrections and some uh, optical flares. Yep, that was the word I was searching for. Um, so basically part 1 is Cinema 4D and part 2 will be After Effects. Part 2 will be uploaded later and this part will start now. So let's show you guys the video what I'm talking about. So that's it, it's a small short uh, animation, it's not hard to make and it's mostly done in Cinema 4D, just some color corrections and optical flashes that are, are done with After Effects, so um, well yeah, let's get right into Cinema, so let's start Cinema 4D, I've already started Cinema 4D and the first thing we're going to create is um, a text, we need a text, so let's go to MoGraph and let's go to a Mo text and I will call this one Pixel. There we go, and I'm going to, going to choose another font. I don't like the base font, standard font. So I'm going for Myriad Pro and I will make it bold. Well, it's already bold, I see. Um, just making yeah, the depth doesn't even matter because we don't we are not using depth at all. I will delete it soon, but the size does matter, so just hit T for um, scaling. Just increase it. And here's my text. And I will click on mode text and hit C or click on that make editable button left corner. Um, to make it editable and open the maps or the null objects. Open them all. Make sure the P, I, X, E, and L are hit C again. Like hit C, just like normal and hit C. And just select them all and make. Hold on, I'm, I'm doing something wrong, I need just... We only need cap one of them all. Just go to open the null objects and select cap one from all the letters and just drag them above the null object and then delete the null. So now we just only have the text like a cap, so it's flat and don't, don't have any depth at all. And just select them all and just connect them plus delete. So we have just one text flat only not any depth at all you can do this if you don't have MoGraph um, you can do this simply by clicking on this uh, button and go to text and just type in text uh, I'm sorry, test so that's my text and just um, get an extrude um, extrude thing there and just drag your text in the extrude and there we go there sure um, extrude the text and make that one editable and just get cat one. Maybe that's faster than the way I did before, so excuse me for that. It's um, a little bit faster, but that I scan it anyway. Uh, I'm going to give it another name. I'll give it a pixel. And there we go, there's our first start of our animation. It's not, nothing much going on. Done, it's just the beginning. So. Alright, um, the thing I'm going to create is a MoGraph and I'm going to create a cloner and then I'm going to create a cube and that cube uh, will be one pixel of my of my text so I will decrease the scaling from the cube a lot maybe something like this and I will just drag it into my cloner and I will say to my cloner just drag your cube inside cloner and I will click on the cloner and I will have to match my pixel name with the cloner so the cube is not cloning in a linear way like it's doing now so I'll click on the cloner and when you, you click on the cloner and you go to mode you can see it's linear right now and if I'm changing it to radial you can see the cubes are forming well, a sphere or a radio, radial form, <clears throat> but now I'm going to select object 
and you can see the cloner is gone and that's because it doesn't have any uh, any objects like right now so the next thing we have to do is select your cloner and just drag your pixel layer inside the object so just drag it and copy of uh, drag it into the object so right now you can see the cloner is done and the cube is just following the path of the text but you can see it's only only following some parts of the text because those parts just have vertices I guess it's climbing some vertices but well it doesn't matter uh, just go we have to go to our cloner settings and we will have to do click on clones uh, random just make it random um, and we have to change some other things as well click on the up factor and X plus that means our cube is not rotated so X plus um, just let them follow the surface and increase the count a lot just increase it if you can't slice it to maximum 100 just increase the count and the next thing I'm going to do I don't want my whole text to be filled with large cubes so I'm going to duplicate this cube by click uh, hold control and drag one cube above that one and I will call, call this one cube 2 and I will decrease the scaling of that cube by hitting T just decrease it and just increase the count so now you can see we have got just some multiple, multiple cubes right here and I'm going to duplicate that one as well and I'll call it one cube 3 and just mess around with the scaling maybe you have to use four cubes or three just how many you like I'm going to use a lot a lot of cubes right four call this one cube four and I'll increase the count to I don't know maybe um, 750 and as you can see some cubes are kind of big so just decrease the scaling of that that one that specific cube and just mess around with the scaling right this is kinda looking awesome this is something I want maybe another cube that's very small cube 5 and maybe increase the count a little bit more to 800 so now we can see I've got some a lot of cubes with and you can see the text behind it um, the next thing we're going to do is hide that flat text within our cubes just uh, go to your pixel layer and make sure you've got those two dots selected and make them both both red by just clicking multiple times on it two times I guess it is yep two times two times on each of these dots make makes them red and that stands for um, preview like the upper one is um, the preview you can see if I'm clicking I'm making that one red you can't see them in your project and that's just the preview thing but if I'm going to render this one out you can see in the render it's still visible and that's because that lower dot has also to be red that lower dot stands for your render so make sure that one is red as well so now you can see if I'm rendering there's no text at all so yep that's what we want um, the next thing we're going to add is some color and some light light uh, has to be in our scene and we have to animate it. But first, I'm going to go to cool color, just create a new material. And I'm going to use one, two, three, four, five materials because I have five cubes. Just hold control, drag those materials. And I will make it a blue color. And that's the color what I've used in my other video as well. Just pick cool blue color, not too blue. This one looks cool. And I will give it give it a texture. I've got a normal text. I will post the texture also in the um, description so you can download it by yourself. The same texture I've used. Yep, create that path. And I will set the mix mode to multiply. And now you can see <coughs> my um, my material got some texture on it. And maybe I'm going to change a. I'm going to give it a bump. And maybe just give it the same texture, just copy the channel. 
go to cop color copy channel and go to bump and just paste the channel and now you can see it just got a small bump on it with the same texture and you can also use the displacement if you want some weird things going on with your uh, material but I don't think I'm going to use a displacement at all but maybe 10% not too much maybe that looks okay um, anything else I'm going to use maybe a little bit of a reflection not too much 15% maybe and I think that's it so I will go a cube that material and I will just drag it to oh no, I'm not going to drag it I'll just delete that other materials and I'm going to um, copy that material double click on it I, I'm only going to change the color itself so you don't have to make those channels again and again and just drag it onto another cube copy them and just give it another color a little bit more Oh, a dark, darkened color. Make sure it's all in the right blue tone. You don't want any red cube. Now that that will look kind of weird if you're using another color right now. But maybe if you want that, want to, you can do it. But I'm not going to use that. So maybe a little bit more to the green. And I, oops, not that one. Maybe one above. And for the last one, I'm going to use a normal blue color. So blue something like this maybe this looks good just hit, just make a, a, a bleh, just make a fast render so you can look the colors um, the next thing I'm going to add is a camera I'm going to zoom out a bit when I've got a text full in screen I think that's something like here. I'm going to click on this button, the camera button, and I'm going to click twice on that weird dot after the camera. So when I'm changing now, you can see I've created that camera. And if I'm clicking on this button, I'm going just in the front view of my text. And this is more like front view. So yeah, let's go get out of our camera. And the next thing we're going to do is add some lighting. Of light, not the lighting, just lighting. Um, just right nope not right click this hold click this button and click on the physical sky and we are going to this maybe 10 o'clock that's looking good and we are going to add some fullmetric light behind it and that's just basically add an area light and just move it behind the text and just make sure it's right in the front of our text just maybe make it a little bit larger like this and just give that light a blue color let's go to go to click on light in general and make it a blue color and we are going to increase the intensity a lot 400 maybe Maybe it's just not in the right position. Just move it around a bit. And make shadow to shadow map soften. And we are going to add. Let's mess around with the sense. Maybe the sense is a little bit too high. Maybe 200 is enough. And let's get to our visibility. That's all okay. Shadow maybe. Nope. Just go to some tabs and look how it's set up. Mm, no, I don't want any noise at all. In general, is okay. Well, I think it's okay right now. So, so let's see the render first. So you can see it got some light uh, beneath the, uh, behind the text. It's looking great. So now we can animate our text and do some auto color correction and uh, optical flares and after effects. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a random on it. So it just go to make those cubes floating around. So let's go to MoGraph Effector and hit on the random effector. And basically what we have to do is 
make sure our we have to animate our render effect and just click on the cloner and go to the tab effectors and just drag your random effector into there and as you can see uh, you already have got some randomness on your <coughs> on your type so next thing we're going to do is click on the random layer it's kind of weird talking now because I'm using some weird terms but um, just position the random right in the middle of your text I think this is right in the middle let's go to front view yeah, it's basically in the middle. Um, click on your random random effect, and now just animate your random effect. So um, we go to zero frames. All right, excuse me, I'm back. Someone was at the door, so I had to go. Um, all right, I was talking about the random effect. Oh yeah, um, yeah, we have to animate our random effect first. But the thing is, we only have 90 frames to work with, and we have to increase those frames first. So let's get to our edit and then project settings. And we are going to on the project settings tab, and we're going to increase our maximum time and just make it 300 frames. I guess I've used before, so make it 300. And when you hit enter, you can see we have now zero to 300 frames to work with. So that's a lot. It's basically, I think I'm working with, or I'm working with 30 frames per second, so it's now like 10 seconds long. And that's long enough. Um, just click on your random and just go to zero frames. And we are going to transfer mode. We are going to use our fall off, I guess. Let's see your fall off. Yep, let's go to your fall off and make it the shape a sphere and now we are going to change some things we are going to set the size to zero we are going to get one zero as well because if you're going to increase your size 100 you can see it's just creating a circle and if you're increasing this one you can see it's, it's all yeah it's basically animating where the um, random effector size is. It's kind of weird to explain but as you can see if I'm changing the height from the fall off it's going from 300 to 0 and you can see some cubes are going out in space to when it hits 0. So that's basically what we want to do but we are going to give this one first the size of 0 this one 0 as well and this one we have to increase a lot, 250 maybe. And set the scaling also to 170. Uh, this one, the offset has to be zero, that's okay for now. Fall off a little bit higher, 75. And we have to invert our fall off. So click on the invert tab, and you can see it's now just floating around first, and then it's coming to the middle and just let it set the weight to 100 that's okay and just messing around with some settings with the deformer you can change the parameter as well just go to the parameter tab and increase the X, I and Z so it's just more in space We'll just increase it a lot, maybe 1500 to 1000 to 800. Just, just try some things out. And we are going to back inside the camera. You can see you've got, just got all cubes in space doing nothing at all. Because we have to animate it first. So the next thing we have to do is go to our fall off again. And just go to right click your size animate at keyframe and do that as well with our let's see I think we only have to animate our size so just go to frame 300 and just change the size by uh, 500 to 300 and we have to increase it a little bit bigger 
well, a little bit, I'm saying 450 to maybe 650. So, well, the whole text is done. So, if you can see, ah, I forgot. Oops, excuse me. I've changed my time indicators, and now it's all just gone. My keyframes are gone, so I have to make this one. <sighs> 600 again to 500. Well, it's kind of a little bit different than After Effects. After Effects is creating some auto keyframes. You can do auto keyframes in cinema as well, but I don't have it turned on, so I have to change it by hand. So now we have to right click again, animate, and add keyframes. So it got the keyframe with those values right here at position 300. So now you can see it's animating from 0 to. 300 and changing only the size of our fall off. So the next thing we have to do is rotate our camera and well it's basically simple but I've used a small trick to let my text rotate. Um, just go to zero uh, frames and we're going to animate our camera. Um, just go to your coordinates and just make sure oh we have to go to frame 300 first, so this is our end position. So now we have to right click and add a keyframe for our rotation, scaling and our position. So just those three keyframes. So the thing is at our end animation we just want this view, the front view and that's basically the end view of our camera. So that's why I'm going to frame 300 and create a keyframe for all those values. And now I'm going to change the beginning value just by going to frame zero and I don't know just zoom in uh, rotate with holding alt and just rotate the camera to a kind of weird position maybe something like this don't worry about those light in the area you don't want you don't going to see that light in the render um, just go to a weight position and right click add keyframe for all those three keyframes again. So now you can see your camera is moving from this part to that part. But you can see our animation is beginning in a weird position so I'm going to go to my first keyframe again and just go... It's beginning right here so I'm going to maybe dip this position. Don't worry about the floor. Um, I'm going to add keyframe again, add keyframe, so now it's beginning from this position. Now if I'm hitting play, you can see text is coming right in that position. So that is our first cool small animation. The thing is we have to rotate our text and that's basically very easy. So I'm going to show you how I did that. Uh, the thing is, our cloner is linked to our pixels, uh, pixel layer, and that layer is hidden. But the thing is, you can still rotate or mess around with that layer. So, we are going to rotate pixel by going to zero, and click on your layer. And I think this one is... I have to look... What the... No, that's, that's the X... Uh, the X... The X axis... Kind of weird word. Um, we have to rotate this one, but you can see it's rotating from that anchor point. And to change the anchor point in cinema, just click on a pixel and click on that pivot um, button on the left side. So it's showing you enable axis. And enable axis and just change... No, I have to go to frame 300 first. Um, enable axis and just move the axis to the middle. Oh god. Oh god! He's doing some weird stuff. Ah! Just, just click on the axis button and just move your pivot in the middle of the text. Just where the X is or I don't know what kind of word you're using. And now we can change our rotation so it's rotating from that part of the text. I'm setting it right in the middle. Um, I'm going to frame zero and I will change the the H value, right click, and I'm going to rotate it first. 
maybe 350, right click, add keyframe, I'm going to 300 and I'm going to change it to zero, right click, add keyframe. So if I'm looking to my animation right now, let's take a look at it, you can see the text is also rotating as well, with some cool slow motion in it. There uh, we go, maybe 350 is maybe too, too much, maybe set it to 200, though it doesn't rotate that much. 200 is still a lot, oops, I thought 200 is a lot, but I already forgot to set the keyframe again. So make it 200, right click, add keyframe, and just take a look at it, and there we go, there is my animation. So that's basically how I've made my animation in Cinema 4D. Um, if you got any questions about it, just leave it in the comments. And in part two, I will explain you how to create it in After Effects, or well, how to export it to After Effects and just create some light effect on it with some optical flares and well, the, all the finishing touches on it. Um, how to render this, just go to our render settings and make sure the output is Full HD is 90, 90, 20 to 1080. So that's full HD. And just go to your safe and make a PNG. Make a PNG folder. Maybe this one. Right click, new folder. And I'll call this one animation. Animation. And. Um, well, intro. And make sure to go to your output. Make sure you've selected from to, from and to, from zero frames to 300. Uh, frame step one. So now it's making 300 PNG files from your render. And in Adobe Premiere, you can just make that PNG sequence to a video so you can use an all of video for After Effects. That's basically always how I render. If I want just full HD quality, it's a good way to do it. Because if you're going to render it as an, um, <clears throat> let's say as an RV, you don't have some alpha maps. Sometimes it does render also an alpha channel with, within an RV, but the files are so big and it's better to use a PNG file so you have the right resolution with the right HD quality on it. So, and that's basically how I render from 0 to 300 frames for HD. Make sure other settings are done as well. Maybe you can add an image inclusion on it so you can just see some shadows as well. Um, well, yeah, I will see you guys in part 2 and I will explain you guys how I finished this text. And I'll check it out in the next video. Bye -bye.